Hey guys, welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. Patera with you today. We are working, working, working. We have so many projects going on right now. So what I want to talk to you, to you about today is adding hog panels or cow panels to your farm in order for you to have vertical gardening going on. If you live on a homestead, if you live out in the country, if you live in the back, you know, you have a backyard in an urban homestead or not, just want a nice urban garden, this is a great thing for you to have, okay? For those of you that don't know, they are bought typically to maintain animals in an area. If it's windy, by the way, I'm sorry. <laughs> We've had a cold front come in. You can buy these at your co-op or at your tractor supply. They run somewhere in the ballpark of $20, $22 a piece, something in that effect, okay? And they're a little bit different. They both are about 16, they're 16 feet. Um, if I'm not mistaken, your cattle panel though is gonna be wider, okay? See right here? Um, they are taller. So the cattle panel is going to be a little bit wider for you in terms of this way. Now mine's bent. That's what pigs do to it. Mine are very, very used at this time. So we didn't go out and buy these per se just for gardening. Uh, we reuse, we try to repurpose as much as physically possible. So you can see that there was an area we didn't need them and we've taken them down. So we're still working on this. Let me tell you what you're gonna need to do. You're gonna need to get a cow panel, cattle panel, cow panel, uh, and then you're gonna get T-posts, okay? Just like so. That's where these handy dandy tools come into play. If you've got one of these with a big old strong dude that can help you out, I've got a big old handsome husband that can help me out, he will drive in four T posts at each corner. As you can see, just right here one, two, three, four. And then we just lean this up against it, let it create its arch, and there you have it very very sturdy folks this works really well here because we have tremendous wind that's why i'm not doing teepees right now um, i did teepees two years ago and i had to keep putting in tea stakes next to them to keep the teepees up because the wind up here is tremendous just like right now so this is a windbreak so the wind is going to be coming right through for us and it goes back over the front of the house over the tennessee valley so that works really good you're also going to need um some pliers okay just like so adjustable pliers and then when you buy t-posts you will get the little the little clamps that come with them okay uh, they're tricky guys and, and you know i'm gonna tell you gals you're probably gonna need a little help with this okay they're really tough to manage at times depending on the situation so you're simply going to drive your post in one two three four you're going to drive this over and then you're gonna come through on each T-post and you're simply going to clamp them like so. Now, you can use zip ties, for example. I have lots of zip ties over here on my horse wire fencing on T-post. It's held for several years. We just take, a, you know, take off the old ones, add a few new ones, whatever, it works really well. But I will tell you, this is much thicker and more um, hardy even than that than that fencing over there so you really want to try to get these it really works well so what I'm going to do which I'll show you is I'm going to come in and I'm going to plant Missouri Wonder pole beans along through here on each side and then back on the other side take you over here and along through here okay and then i'm going to come in with my mulching system and water them and they're going to grow because they're pole beans okay so they're going to grow and they're going to traipse up and they're going to make a tunnel okay you can actually put these up i've seen some folks put them up they'll put up like three and they'll make a long tunnel you can do them side by side and make like a rainbow effect you can do all sorts of things we've actually Got this is our third cattle panel uh, or cow panel that we're using this year. We've got two on the other side that literally are being used for cucumbers and Kentucky wonders. We're going to be using these for Missouri wonders. So we're out here gardening and tilling and clipping and revamping and getting all of this. This is our lasagna based garden. Okay, this is all soil that we have made here on the farm. You're seeing it right here. 
and uh, because we may have some excavation work done we've gone ahead and uh, decided to try to use what we can of this uh, this year and uh, make it work so let's start planting the Missouri Wonders and see how it goes all right guys I've just come through I've done a nice little trench on each side as you can see right there and I've planted my beans. These are my beans that I seed safe from, the Missouri Wonders. They're one of my favorite pole beans from Baker Creek Heirloom Company and uh, or rareseeds.com. And I'm just going to cover them up. Very simple. I do a couple inches deep, four to six inches apart. Sometimes if the bean looks a little wompy to me, I might throw an extra bean in there and just know to thin it. Okay, so I'm going to cover these up and we'll get to mulching. All right, guys, so here's what we've done. We've gone back and we've covered up the beans. And then I have come down with a little bit of straw. I'm really big into mulching with straw and with grass clippings. Yes, they are awesome, just incredible. You wanna be able to use you know, chemical, uh, chemical free uh, grass clippings that you have mowed or maybe mow your neighbor's yard. Once you get down one thick layer of grass clippings as a thick mulch, around certain areas in your garden, the walkways and whatnot, guys, your weed situation goes down immensely and it enriches your soil. It adds nitrogen back the whole nine yards. So what I'm going to do is now that I've come in with straw right around and you're going, well, if you're going to use grass clippings, why are you using straw? The reason being is because I don't want the grass clippings to actually touch any of the plants that I'm planting, whether it be a tomato plant, whether it be you know, carrots, whether it be this, I don't want too much nitrogen in one spot. You don't want to burn them, okay? So what I'm going to do is, to start out, is I'm simply going to put me a nice little pathway right here underneath the tunnel, and then I will work my way around the tunnel and in the walkway area. Do that as soon as you can, guys, because the longer you wait, things come in, so you want to do that. Um, I do this with my tomato. I do it with everything as much as possible, and I really think that this is the main reason that all of this, in conjunction with all the other natural things that we're using, is why the soil is so good, because we use so many grass clippings. So I'm going to lay this down, right, just like so, and we'll see how it goes. All right, guys, it's that simple. Make the things on your property that you have or simple things you can pick up with ease and put in your trunk and take home or things that you can get next door. Use them in your gardens if you can. Simple bale of straw, simple, you know, bag of grass clippings. All of these things help to enrich your soil, make your gardens better, make gardening easier, and just make it prettier. So what this will do is create a beautiful, like almost little carpet under here. And I will continue as I mow to go all the way around it. We appreciate y'all watching here at Appalachia's Homestead. If you like what you see, like and subscribe. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. We have a lot of work to do. The season is late, and we have a lot of new baby animals on the farm, so it's gonna be nice to see all these pretty green beans just coming on up. Y'all have a great afternoon, and we'll talk to you soon.